Welcome back, everybody, to another Travel with Josh and Taylor podcast. We are uh, going to be talking a little bit, actually, not a little bit. We're going to be exclusively talking about Disney Cruise Line today. And uh, I, I, you know, if you've been watching us for a long time, or maybe you just showed up, um, you may know or may not know that we used to do a lot of Disney theme parks. And uh, over the last few years, we've been really transitioning away from that. Not that it hasn't fully disappeared. Obviously, we were just there uh, doing some videos. But, you know, we've been really trying to see a lot more of the world. I think something that really pops into my mind very clearly is Epcot. You know, we were just in Epcot. We did a video from Epcot. And Taylor had mentioned about being in Italy um, in like the Venice Square, basically. We were there in the real place, you know, not just in Epcot. Like we were physically in the real, the real world, right? You could say instead of the the <laughs> Disney Dome. So the real world. Yeah, and and I I think that you know something that's really nice is uh, or I'm getting distracted because I just remembered that we didn't do introductions. So hello, my <laughs> name is Josh, and my name is Taylor. I was gonna wait till you were done talking to yeah. remind you. Uh, we kind of just jumped into it there, um, but. The reason I want to talk about this is because we we just mentioned last week we're going to be going on the Disney Wish again. It's the next trip coming up, so you'll see all of that after Scotland gets posted. Uh, but something I think that's interesting to note is that even though we are trying to get away from doing Disney all the time and focusing on it, we always seem to have to come back to doing a Disney cruise. All the time. So it's the very first cruise that we ever did was with Disney. And I was actually just thinking about this. It's been 10 years since our first Disney cruise. It's 2024. Our first cruise was in 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hmm. Right? 2014? Or yeah. was it 2012? No, it was 2014, I think. Right? Yeah. I think so. Mm, yes, because didn't the ship come out in 2012? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. 10 years since our first Disney cruise. Right. Our first cruise ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I didn't even think about that. It's not like we're not doing other cruises this year where you could be like, oh, we, we picked to do Disney because it's, you know, been 10 years. You know, We picked to do Disney because it was a last minute spur of the moment right. decision. We got a great, we got a great deal on it. So, but yeah, I thought today we would talk really about Disney Cruise Line, our first trip going to Disney are going on Disney Cruise Line, right? Things have certainly changed since then. We'll talk about that. But ultimately, I think, too, you know, why do we have this need or this feeling to have to go back? Um, technically, the last cruise that we did was in 2022 with Disney. It hasn't actually been two years, um, but, you know. Feels like it. Feels like it for sure. So the last cruise we did was on the Fantasy. It was in November of 2022. Uh, so it's been, you know, 18 months or so at least mm -hmm. uh, since the last time that we cruised with Disney. And so I, I just kind of thought like, you know, I didn't want to break into Scotland today because we haven't posted anything yet. Those first videos are going to be coming out now. Um, and at the time of this recording, we have nine days left until this oh, right. cruise. Yeah. When this gets posted... I wasn't going to try and math that. Seven. And screw it. Yeah, it'll be seven days because it'll be a week away on Monday. I guess. We get on the ship on Monday. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have, when you're listening to this, we'll have only one week left. Um, and the excitement just continues to build. It does. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I just thought, I don't know if you had something you wanted to add. So. I was thinking about this in the last episode that we recorded, and I didn't mention it because that episode wasn't really about Disney Cruise Line. We kind of segued into it at one point, but I remember back in, the, oh my, we did so much in 2023, like I can't even wrap my head around it. Right. Because we went on a Greek Isles cruise, which we yep. have brought up a few different times um, in May of 2023. Uh, where we sailed out of Haifa and went up into the Greek Isles. While we were on that cruise, I kept thinking in my head, I need to go on a Disney cruise. I need every day. I need to go on a Disney cruise because the well, experience on the ship was so good. poor that I needed yeah. to go back to our cruising roots of a Disney cruise and just have that like magical Disney-ness 
but then also just such like great service and the nostalgia of Disney cruising for us because you know we've done a we've done quite a few of them. I right. mean, you know, some people only get to do one Disney cruise, if any at all. We have friends that haven't done any yet, and they really want to go. Um, it just hasn't worked out for them yet. But you know, it it's an investment to go on a vacation, especially a Disney type of vacation. Disney cruising is expensive, um, yeah. but. There is a lot included with a Disney cruise, so we can kind of talk about that a little bit um, at some point. But that MSC cruise just <laughs> ever good. since we went on that, I'm like, I literally looked at Josh on the ship after our day in Mykonos because getting off that ship, I literally thought like I thought we were going to get hurt. Yeah, Mykonos was pretty bad. It was bad. And so go back and watch that video because Josh did put clips of it in there. It was so bad. Um, after that, we got back on the ship and I looked at Josh and I said, you have to take me on a Disney cruise. Like we have to go. So it's going to be a little less than a year. Just, it's almost You're on right. the cusp of a year yeah. later. We're going on that Disney cruise. Right. <laughs> but don't let Taylor fool you. It's not like she was deprived of cruising between MSC No, no, not and at Disney. all. Not at all. I, I love a Royal cruise. I love a Norwegian cruise. I mean, we only did one celebrity, but I did have a good time on it, but there's, I'm telling you, it's because our first cruise was a Disney cruise. Right. It kind of just holds a special place for us. Absolutely. Um, plus, it's it's Disney. If you like Disney stuff, yeah. like, if you know, you know. It's just that, that right. feeling. Yeah, and I think the other thing, too, I mean, obviously, we can talk about everything with Disney, uh, you know, explaining the whole process of it. But um, a good... Little thing that I always like to throw in here is that if you are looking to plan a Disney cruise, you can head on over to goldgirlgetaways.com. Uh, and I bring that up because it's really interesting a lot of times. Uh, I think people think that if you're on more of a shoestring-ish budget, because you probably need to have a little bit more than that. But if you are on a tighter budget, you might be thinking that you can't do Disney Cruise Line. But, uh, you know, reach out to one of the agents at Gold Girl Getaways. Um, Info at goldgirlgetaways.com. Is the email. There, yep, there you <laughs> go. Um, but reach out because you you won't be able to get on like that brand new treasure ship. You might not be able to take the wish. You, you might know. not be able to do a seven night. But um, we. But I was just talking to one of our other agents uh, who booked for three people. Uh, I think it's like her and her husband and like maybe their son or their child uh, on the magic. And it goes to... Both Castaway Key and I think the new Lookout Lookout Cove K or whatever. Um, she said it was only like three grand. So I mean, like that's pretty that's, good for three people. That's really really good. And and if that sounds like it's too much, like I said, you might need to have a little bit more of a larger shoestring budget. But I mean, that's fairly cheap, right? The Wish. Uh, just so everybody knows, when we did the Wish last year, two years ago now, yeah, twenty twenty two. There's a four night sailing in a balcony room uh the ship had only been sailing for about a month when yeah. we booked it it was uh when we sailed on i it. think it was over five grand for, for just the two, two of people. us you know yeah. for only four nights uh down to the bahamas and over to castaway key so that was really expensive but if you're looking to do disney there are more budget friendly sailings out there for you mm -hmm. um and if you don't know where to start head on over to goldgirlgetaways.com yes. uh and uh find find uh, you can get somebody to to help you so and it doesn't cost you a thing. Whatever right. you would pay booking directly through Disney, you would pay directly through Gold Girl Getaways. The thing is, they will be there to help you figure it out what kind of trip it is that you want to go on. And like we were saying, they will help if you really want to go on a Disney cruise, but you know, you've got to have a little bit of a realistic budget, but you're trying to stay on the lower end of pricing. They will find you something. Right. Something that can get you on a Disney cruise. Even if that's a three night in an inside state room, they can help you figure it out. Right. Or maybe you don't realize that the budget you have in mind is better than three nights in an inside state. Sure. Room. So, yeah. Yeah. They'll so, figure it out. Yeah. So, uh, breaking into this week's episode, we're going to really dive deep here. Um, well, we about, are diving, we're diving deep. I guess. Here. Uh, <laughs> Going back to the very first time that we took a cruise, uh, I, I will never forget this because I thought it was just so funny. Um, 2013, we were in Disney. Taylor and I took- We're on the train. 
Um, Taylor and I took my brother to Disney World, kind of like as like a Christmas thing. It was a little, little bit after Ethan. Christmas. Yeah. Um, I think I just shared a video of him the other, like a while ago. Josh shared it on the Gold Go Getaways Instagram. Oh, really- I think he put it on, you might've put it on a short on our YouTube as well. I might have. I think yeah. you might have at some point of Ethan at, uh, it just reopened. 1900, 1900 Park, Park Fair. Fair. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's the best video ever. Yeah. He got to Hilarious. open the restaurant. I don't know if they still do this anymore, but it was really cool back in the day. When you were like the, the family guests. kind of to first go into some of the restaurants, they would give you, you know, not nothing like expensive or anything like that. They might give you like a little certificate. It was like or, a, I think they gave um, them a certificate and like it was like a signed placemat for all the characters. Yeah, it was a signed placemat. Um, but unfortunately, the woman who uh, got it for him had spelled his name wrong. <laughs> so, um, did? yeah, remember it was spelled E A T H A N or something like oh. that. Yeah, it was, it was, I don't know, but... Okay, anyway. Um, but anyways, you know, so we did this trip with Ethan. Um, he was like maybe 10 years he old. Was, yeah, because we got the dining plan. Right, um, and we said he was nine. Uh, statue, Why did you just put that out there? In 10 years, statute of limitations, right? <laughs> uh, come after me, Disney. So No, uh, he had like literally just turned 10. It was like the brink. Anyway... Continue on. January. Forget, forget he, you hear he that. He turned 10 in Shh, June. Forget you even heard this. Anyways, uh, but we had a great trip and we're on our way back home. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it was like on the tram or if we were on we, the I bus. remember it vividly. We had just gotten on the train at the uh, Main Street station and we were about to go ride the train around the park because we hadn't done that yet. It was kind of in the middle of the afternoon. We had been there all day. And Josh and I were starting to talk with each other about the next trip that, because anytime this has been us forever. Um, anytime we're on a trip, we start planning like another trip, whether it's the next trip or a future, you know, sure years down the road, whatever. Um, and we still do that to this day. Just like I said, we were in Scotland and we booked this Disney wish cruise. Yep. We can't help ourselves. So years ago, we're on the train. I'm pretty sure we were still sitting at the station and we were talking about how we wanted to come back the next year around the same time because we had such a good time. Um, The weather was good. It wasn't freezing cold, but it wasn't super hot. And so I texted my mom and was like, hey, Josh and I are starting to talk about what we're going to do next year for our Disney World trip. And um, she texted me back and was like, well, I don't think we're going to go to Disney World next year. I think we're going to go on a Disney cruise. And, but before she said the Disney cruise, she's like, I don't think we're going to go to Disney world next year. So then I was like all upset and I'm like, well, I really want to go on a trip with all of our family, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, well, we were talking about maybe going on a Disney cruise with everybody. And I was like, I want to go with everybody on a Disney cruise because I remember whenever I was little, my aunt and uncle used to, they used to go on Disney cruises and they'd take my cousin and he'd always come back talking about how cool the kids clubs are. So I'm a little sad. I was deprived of the kids club ages because I was what? 19, 20, 2014. Uh, I would, I was probably about 20, 19, 19. I was like 19, 20. I was 21 in 2013. So I was too old for the kids club, but I was also too young to drink. Right. So I was in this really weird age group, but yeah. Josh was old enough to drink. So he could like, do stuff with my family. I could still go into the adult only area, but whatever. We ended up deciding we were going to go on this Disney cruise. So a year goes by. We've we've all planned this cruise. We've all booked this cruise. We actually used a travel agent to book this cruise. Mm -hmm. Um, All of us did. We made, she made sure everything was done for us. All of our dining was linked. Um, Our room reservations were linked so we could book activities together. And we were ready to go on our first ever Disney cruise on the Disney fantasy. And at the time it was the newest Disney cruise ship. Yeah, it only been out for two years, I think, because it launched yeah. in 2012, I believe. So, uh, and I want to say probably back then we paid roughly maybe five grand for two of us I on a seven night four. with a balcony. Maybe four. I think it was a little about cheaper. Four thousand. Four thousand. But it was a right seven night. There. We were in an ocean view. We were in a family, a deluxe family ocean yeah. view balcony because we didn't necessarily when Josh and I picked like our room we didn't pick it based on the category we looked at the ship deck plans and we picked the exact room number we wanted and we just told her we want this room 
what you know tell right. us what the price is on this room this is the one we want yeah. we were in 6688 on the disney fantasy you gotta stay in that room because it's the best one <laughs> I don't remember. I'll never forget because I loved it. I don't remember. It was on the back of the ship. Why was that great? But because the balcony was so long. Oh yeah, because the the rooms towards the back of the ship are te- they do tend to be a little bit larger, um, or oversized you could say compared oversized, to being yeah uh, on the sides of the ship on port or starboard side. So so yeah, we uh, essentially planned our planned that cruise pretty much while we were on our way back from Disney in 2013 and. <laughs> Pretty um, much. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's what we did for the most part. And um, I think one thing that's really great about Disney, when you look at them and compare them to other, you know, cruising brands, uh, whether that's Royal or Norwegian or Celebrity or Carnival, uh, obviously the, the intent there is to really bring you into a story, right? I mean, it's just like how Walt Disney World is. Uh, and we mentioned yes. this a little bit last week, and I know that we've mentioned this plenty of times before um, and vlog videos and different things, but um, they take that story driven excitement and feeling and really step it up on to the cruise ship. The first time we were on the wish, I didn't feel like that at all, but um, you know, the fantasy and the magic, which we've done before fantasy, we've done, you know, I feel like we've done it numerous times, but um <laughs> We were but, counting how many cruises we've done the other night, and we were like, wow, we've been on the fantasy a lot. We have, yeah. I mean, we've only done the fantasy and the magic and the wish, magic once, the wish once, um, and the wish rest about of the to fantasy. Be twice. Yeah. So, but but they really take that to a whole nother level on there. And, you know, it's really just a much more relaxing vacation compared to being in the parks. I, I mean, I think a lot of people are really afraid that they're going to be bored or not going to have enough to do, but the the thing is, is that you don't end up waiting in long lines to meet those characters that you really want to meet. Nope. Uh, you don't have to pay for any of your food. Uh, you don't have to pay for soda uh, or water. Obviously, you have to pay for alcohol. Um, but, you know, I mean, all of those things are really what make it so much better than being in the theme parks. And I love riding a lot of the attractions, but there is certainly nothing better than Literally just being able to relax, kick we, back. So we had gone to Disney World pretty much my whole entire life, every yeah. year, up until that point uh, when we went on this cruise. Um, and we had we had um, we had booked this cruise, but then last minute my mom decided that they wanted to stay on property for a couple of days after the cruise. So we were like, oh, well, we're going with you. <laughs> so we stayed with them for a few nights and then stayed a little longer with just me and Josh. Um, but... Oh my gosh, you, you're like looking at me like this. I had a thought. Was that the first cruise? Yes, because we got engaged in 2014. Oh, wow. I was thinking it was like the next year for some reason. No. Gotcha. No, yeah, you're but right. But anyway, this trip, we did not realize. Like, my family didn't really go on a lot of other vacations. Occasionally, we like, I think there was maybe one or two other years that I remember really that we did like a beach trip. Um but still, I think my family just doesn't really know how to do like a relaxing type trip. We're really like on the go type people, I guess. Um, so Disney was our vacation, if you will, but it really wasn't a relaxing vacation. And it wasn't until this cruise that we realized that Disney World was not relaxing in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I mean, I think we didn't do anything else. I've said this before, but when I went with Taylor's family the first few times at Disney World, her mom always joked that like, well, at least the first time she did, because afterwards then I know what to expect. But she joked the first time, like, you're going to need to take a vacation after this quote unquote vacation, because like we don't stop, you know, they got up at like six or seven o'clock in the morning and had a bounty platter or whatever in the room. And or then we went to a character breakfast or in went, the park. Or went to a character. But I mean, like it was like first thing, like there's no like going into the park after it opens. It was rope drop every day. If there Early was entry every day, if there was extra magic hours in the morning, which is a time gone by, uh, not doesn't exist anymore really. But, uh, if there were extra magic hours in the morning, we, we were up, like they started at six you're up at five o'clock and on the bus by five 30 to get to the park by six and be in the, I mean, they weren't ever that early, but um, yeah. I mean, this was the time where we found out that it was an actual relaxing vacation. And even now, now that I'm like really kind of like thinking hard about it, 
I'm pretty sure that whenever it got brought up about doing a cruise, I was kind of like, I was in that same boat of like, but what are we going to do the whole time? Mm -hmm. You know, um, if I'm going to like do Disney, I felt like I want to be in the theme parks because I want to ride the rides and do the attractions and things like that. Um, and I felt like at first, like this might be kind of like a waste of money to just go be on a ship, sit by a pool, right. You know, and, and obviously, do you like, know who, who you know, knows what? We, we knew we could meet like some characters, but it was like, but then, but then what do you do? You know? So yeah, relaxing <laughs> is a hundred percent what it is. And Another part of the reason why we realized that it was so relaxing. So you, a cruise is really all what you make it. You can do every single activity on the cruise all day. You can be go, go, go all the time. You can be in and out of the pool all day long. You can be doing the slides, whatever. Um, but you can also sit around at the pool if you want to sit around at the yeah. pool. We do like to have a little bit of downtime. Um, we That tends to be like our coffee time yeah. um, or breakfast in the morning on the balcony, whatever. Um but we realized when we went to Disney World after this cruise, oh my gosh, now we have to pay for our food. Right. Now we have to pay for every drink that we want to get. We have to pay for all of our snacks. So such a mistake. And then we got to get up early. We got to get out, get right. out into the parks. And right. we're just like, oh my gosh. And even like, though it was a cooler time of the year in January... It was still a standing out in the sun, you know, it still gets, it still is hot. Right. I mean, yeah. Um, so yeah, we couldn't just go like dip in the pool real quick and then go right. back to our room and change and then go have or go lunch grab something from the buffet, go or... meet a character like all within like an hour. That would take you a few hours at Walt right. Disney world. Um, so our biggest takeaway from our very first trip, which we can still keep talking about it, but our biggest takeaway from this whole thing was do not go to Disney world after a cruise. Right. Yeah. No matter what cruise line you're cruising with, do not go to a theme park after, go before. Yeah. Because then you can have all your fun, ride all your attractions, run around all day, and then you can relax on the right. cruise after. Yeah. Much better way to experience it, I promise. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's like, uh, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper than into our very first cruise. I think some of the things that maybe we didn't, uh, realize or had thought about, which I know is kind of hard to think about cause it's been so long ago, but you know, I think this is totally being, uh, I don't know how to say this other than like, you know, virgin eyes, right? Like we have never done a cruise before. Um, I don't know if you can, if it focuses. But this is from our very first cruise when we were about to board the ship. What is it? The you and Minnie. Oh, yeah. Right. I bought that little sweatsuit. It's kind of actually like the sweatshirt I'm wearing right now. Right. Um, I bought that little lounge set specifically to wear to get on the ship. Yeah. Because my grandma said that people did that. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'll <laughs> never forget that. Um, we have some great Mom stories. There's no doubt about oh, that. Oh, yes, we do. So, yeah. I mean, well, I think that's a good transition right there into kind of talking about the first time and and when i bring up i it's kind of like being that i should not have said virginized but like we've never done it before right it's our very first oh, time we don't know what to expect we we you know, know nothing for for all i know after being on the disney ship for the very first time and going into disney's cruise terminal every other cruise ship that i get on i think well they're gonna have their own cruise terminal and it's gonna be decorated for them and themed for them and blah 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 yada 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 um and that's really not the case and it hasn't didn't, doesn't even become the case until probably 2020 ish, mm -hmm. um, where cruises, uh, these cruise companies start building their own genuine terminals, right? Norwegian's a prime one, Royal wow. Caribbean in Miami has one now. Um, and I think that that's what's really cool is that when you go specifically out of Port Canaveral and now Port, Port of Everglades, I think, um, cause Disney now owns that port down there as well. They have their own terminal. They don't own the port, but they own the terminal. Um, you know, you get that Disney magic before you even step on the ship, right? The Mickey archway the before Mi you go get on the ship. But even before that though, even before that, when you go through security and you've done the, the extra check-in, uh, I mean, There's, even just pulling into sure, the terminal, you have cast it's a members, Disney cruise line up on the building. You have cast members who are outside with the Mickey gloves on, and they're like waving, waving. at you with a smile. I mean, it is really... <laughs> I'm so excited to go on the list. I know. It's really magical. Like, it's really great. Uh, and I think that that, again, is something that 
kind of, I mean, as you can see with Taylor's excitement, she's about to start crying over there. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> but it's those little things, right, that I think kind of get us excited to go back again. Um, they don't necessarily keep us coming back, but it's a nice additive thing. And, you know, we get into the cruise terminal, right? You have the opportunity to go and get a picture with Minnie uh, or, or Mickey, Mickey whoever's, uh, there. whoever's there. They do rotate them out. Uh, I do think that there are sometimes other characters besides Minnie and Mickey. But again, a prime example, like where there's not really a long line, you know, no. um, and well, and even like if there is, it moves really fast. at different times. Right. So there's not always, not everybody that's getting on the ship is going to be in that terminal at the same time. Right. Um, because you have times that you show up to the port. Um, even before 2020, like years ago, there was a certain time that you were able right. to board the ship. Yeah. And, and I, you know, so I think all of these little things um, just really add to that feeling of wanting to come back doing these things again. Uh, and, you know, it's hard to kind of like overlook that, but you know, as we move in, right, we've got the, the Mickey ears the archway. archway that you go under. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you're looking to get a photo of that without anybody in there, you know, you're going to have to kind of probably show up like a little bit later, like probably around like 1231 o'clock, yeah. um, to board the ship because then there's not really anybody in the terminal and you can get some like good, yeah. You know, spacing between people. Yeah. Or just have a lot of patience waiting until there's a gap. A right. lot of You're patience. You're going to have to have a lot. I don't have enough for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Usually <laughs> I'm like, barely, selfie, Josh let's go. Josh barely has enough patience. I want to get on, I want to get on the ship. We're the only two in the queue walking in and I'm like, hey, Josh, turn around. Let me take your picture. And he just like barely looks over his shoulder and keeps walking. The ship might and pull I'm like, away. I'm like, there's nobody behind the me. Just like, stop. The please. ship might pull away before I'm even on there. <laughs> Maybe I'll just have you take my picture this next time because uh, I'll stop. As long, You can stop, but I'm going to take it while walking. <laughs> but yeah, so once you enter the, the archway, uh, the Mickey head archway, and you go to step on the ship, I think, I'm sure Tina and Jim had probably told us yeah, this. So my aunt and uncle and my cousin and my grandma, yeah. um, me mom, they all had been on a cruise before, on Disney cruise before, um, the three of them a couple times and then me mom like once or twice with them. So they all kind of knew like the ropes of getting on a Disney ship. This was all of our first time on the Disney fantasy. So we all wanted to go walk around and check out the ship. Um, and that's pretty much what we did. I think we actually went up and ate. First. Yeah. You're going way ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Sorry. But, I'm just so excited. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I think I'm pretty sure Tina and Jim had probably told us this, but I, but I think what was really cool in that moment of getting onto the ship is when they say your name, no other cruise line does this. They don't announce you coming onto the ship. Um, and it is just kind of, I know it's probably, if you've never done it before, it makes me cry every single time, but I mean, but that there's your prime example right there. Like it might sound kind of dumb and like corny or cheesy. Like, why is this like so significant? But it, it does actually really make again, that little bit of difference between being on Royal or Norwegian, we've never done carnival. I'd rather not sail on a ship that catches on fire, but same you know, one twice. Same one twice. <laughs> um, you know, but I think about it, like when we stepped foot onto the Norwegian Encore back in uh October, right? You just you kind of just get on. There's nothing really It's still an exciting moment because you're getting on that ship, but it just doesn't it's, have it's that not the little, same. It, that little you know? extra touch. Right. It, it's 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 nice because like, oh, you know, I'm like, I'm on the ship. But so for somebody that hasn't been on a Disney cruise before, it would it's a similar feeling to me of when you walk into Magic Kingdom and make that turn and you see the castle for the first time. On the your reveal. Trip. That reveal. That is the same feeling when you you walk up the gangway and you step on your like because where you get on a Disney ship, you don't actually step, you don't go on to like the outside of the ship first and then go inside. Right. That's like all the other cruise lines. You walk on the outside deck, um, like on deck six, seven, eight, somewhere around on there. On other cruise lines. Yeah, on other yes. cruise lines. You walk on that outside deck. You don't do that on Disney. You walk straight into the ship. Right. Um, Right so in the atrium. You're walking down that gangway and then you see the cast members standing there with their microphone and they're yeah. all excited too. And they like take turns announcing so that they can like keep getting people through. Um, and they ask you what your family name is and you tell them and then they announce it. And 
Right. Then you get to walk in and you get the grand reveal of the atrium yeah. and it's just it's really cool. I it's mean, it's like that same Magic Kingdom castle reveal. It feeling. just well, it just makes you feel, you know, more important than you really are. I yeah, mean, it makes you feel special the the getting day. on the ship. It absolutely. Does. I mean, they're doing it for everybody, but yeah, you know, and and I will say too, you know, when looking at other cruise lines and how we've done things with them before, you know, whether it's Royal Caribbean or it's Norwegian um, or even Celebrity or uh, even MSC to some extent, when you get on that ship. On those other ships, it is a direct sales pitch into drinks, <laughs> internet, dining, yes, it is. Um, and to wherever your muster station might be at. When you get onto the Disney ship, um, it is really like you're, you're important. Um, how am I trying? I'm trying to word this. I'm trying to figure out how to say this. But like when you get on, none of those things are important to Disney. Yeah, um, nobody's selling you when you get right. on the ship. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that they aren't trying to upsell you in other places on the ship. Because when you go to the buffet or you go upstairs somewhere like where yeah, there's food yeah. and you pass a, a server, they will certainly be like, hey, if you don't know, you can buy, you know, a 12-pack of beer you can get wine water delivered to your room. Wine. Yeah, right. You know, Do they, you want a cocktail from the bar? Sure. I mean, of like. Of course, there's there's going to be upselling right. on any kind of vacation you go on, but it's just that first moments when you get onto right. the ship, nobody's standing right there trying to sell you a right. beverage package. There's no funnel. Trying to sell right? you internet. I remember like MSC was like, was bonkers. Uh, it's a little bit like um, Margaritaville, tiny bit, but I think MSC was the worst where they funneled you through all of those people. Yeah. Um, and you could not go any Down, other way. Specialty dining, beverage package. Like whatever. internet, you know, you couldn't go any other way. You the, had to go through yeah. that phone. So I think the one nice thing about Disney, how, like, why they don't have to do that, um, that's, it doesn't really feel like that's the Disney way either to right. be like super selling like that. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the other cruise lines doing that. Sure. That is how they make money. And right. some people go into a cruise with zero knowledge at all. and didn't even know you could get a beverage or internet package and you're still on. Um, but they don't know these things. And so they get on the ship and then they see these people selling. Yeah, of course, there's always going to be people that are annoyed that somebody's trying to like sales pitch you. But for those people that don't know anything about this, they're going to buy this stuff. Or if they waited till last minute to decide and then never decided, they're going to buy this stuff when they get on there. It just doesn't feel like that's like, that's the Disney way of doing things. So the nice thing is too, that Disney does have two specialty restaurants on all of their ships, um, or at at least one. They have Palo on the Wonder and Magic, I think. Oh, that's right. They don't and have two. And then the Dream and on Fantasy there. have Remy and Palo. Palo, and then the Wish has Enchante and Palo. Yeah. Um, I'm I don't remember what the Treasure is going to have. Probably something similar as well. Um, but the nice thing is because those re there's only two specialty restaurants. They are the only two adult only. Um, they sell out before the cruise even sets sail. Mm -hmm. um, like months before those are sell sold out. Um, right. So you don't have to worry about rushing to the specialty restaurant to book something. They don't have to worry about trying to get those sold out. Like they're sold out every Every day of the cruise, they are sold out. Yeah. You can try and get a reservation. You might get lucky that somebody canceled. I mean, it, it that has happened to us before. Yeah. Um, but they don't have to sell you because right. it's already been done before you got on the ship. I, I think that they certainly do leave some space open. I think they definitely leave some tables open for people uh, to get on the ship that first day and see if there's any availability for things. Um, but it, it, it's pretty rare. And, and you're right. I mean, like, that's probably why they don't, why you don't ever see that and because they don't need to. Because, again, when you think about all of the other cruise lines, they have how many specialty dining rooms? And they have one main dining room. You know, and one main dining room. And so Disney's they, got rotational dining. And so these other cruise lines, they have to find some way to fill those extra cost dining rooms, those specialty restaurants. And so the only way to do that in a lot of ways is to get in your face, um, you know, when you board the ship. Now, when we took our first group cruise on the Harmony, you were actually, we were able to get some discounted dining we right were. there. Um, but since then we have not been able to do that because all the cruises have been like basically sold out. So, um, but yeah, I think that that's like one really great thing about 
I mean, that's another great thing about Disney. You know, when you when you step on, it, it's really more about your experience and making sure that your experience is great and not really worrying about how much more can we get out of you. A lot of that all-inclusive price with Disney is an all-inclusive price. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, unless you do Ashante or Paolo or Remy, you know, but, um, but yeah, so, uh, like Taylor was saying then, you know, once you get on the ship, you can really kind of go whatever way you want to, depending on when you get on the room, won't be ready. That's a pretty mm-hmm. standard thing around, That's uh, like a cruise, cruise line. industry standard, you know, usually two o'clock ish. Yeah. Roughly. Rooms are typically ready, uh, can vary, but. I think normally, you know, on that, well, what we normally do is just we go to the buffet, I think, usually. We get on the ship. We try to get the earliest boarding time. We get on the ship. We go eat first. Right. As soon as we're done eating, we go start walking around and kind of touring the ship. Yeah. Whether we've been on the ship before or not, we go walk around and look at everything. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the ships that we have been on before that we, like, did again, which is the Disney fantasy, really. Um, This will be the Disney wish now. Um it will really be looking for things we didn't see before things we really enjoyed before, but also did things change? Right. Did things look different? Is this the same as it was the last time? Yeah. Like, I don't remember this being here. And I don't think it, I mean, it's only been two years. I don't think it's really hit dry dock for any type of actual changes. That would be silly, Uh, I think. Yeah. So, uh, I will say what I, what I think is really funny. If you want to, I don't think I took them down. I did. I haven't told Taylor this yet, but um, I did go through our YouTube channel and I took down a lot of old videos, a lot of old videos, original vlog videos that we did Why? like from the first year. Uh, just, I mean, like they, you know, I, what I do is I like, I'll look and see like. Did you like delete them or do you like make them private or? I deleted them, but I also downloaded them first. So it's not like I got rid of them entirely. They're on the server now, but. Why would um, you delete them? Because they weren't, they were just there, you know, they, they didn't really need to be there anymore. So I took them down, but, um, don't worry. We still have them. You can watch them just anytime make them you want. private. Don't delete stuff. Anytime you want to watch them, you can don't watch them. Don't delete stuff. I'll but list them. I don't think that I deleted them. I might have, but you can go back and look at like some of the very rudimentary, uh, edited videos that I did from you the first. You better not have taken those down. That's like memories. I don't think I did, but oh, I can't I remember look. to be honest. But uh, you can look at some of, like, the very first, like, videos that I did. Uh, it was edited to music, which was copyrighted, you know. Oh, yeah. And, I, I mean, I didn't really know what I was doing. But uh, I did enjoy it. I think that that's probably a little bit of what spurred us starting a vlog later on. Oh, yeah. Um, but it was – I bring that up because I really distinctly remember that first it's cruise. There. Excellent. It's five minutes, almost six minutes long. Yeah. Um, it's just a music video, really. There's no, there's no audio. Um, but oh, I gotta watch it. We'll I really out. distinctly remember us eating and then doing the tour. Tina and Jim were like, you know, it's our first time too, but we kind of know the layout of a Disney cruise ship, so yeah. you know, we'll let's all go and like walk around. And we walked, you know, towards the back of the Fantasy, and there's the mini the mini golf is back there, and there's the the aqueduct that comes through, and you know, you can see the slide and. I'm so Golf excited simulator. to get back on the Wish, but I just love the fantasy. I know it's a great ship. I love the fantasy. Ugh. It's amazing, um, and, and yeah, I think you know. Obviously, this really doesn't have anything to do with maybe with us coming back or doing whatever, but it is. You know, like I said, I want to kind of talk about our first cruising experience, and uh, you know, we always recommend to everybody who takes a cruise for the first time or the sex sixth time, if it's the first time on the ship. Go eat some food because you're probably hangry. Um, it's really funny. Scotland, so a little Scotland thing, you know, we've got, I'm editing some videos. The very first video, um, we walk out of the hotel and I'm like, Taylor and I are going to get food because if we don't eat, we're going to rip each other's heads off, you know. Uh, so go on, get on the ship. He's not wrong. <laughs> eat some food and then go and walk around a little bit. Uh, it's really funny too. Do you remember... There were multiple people when we did those, when we did the fantasy two years in a row, roughly the same week where we saw the same people. Oh my gosh, that family. We were they meeting the characters. And they weren't cast members. No. They were, they were normal people just like yep. us. Mm-hmm. Saw them. It the, was a couple and their son. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, and it's just, it's really interesting how you'll see that. I mean, Disney just has this way of keeping people coming back time and time again. Um, and I'm sure they're probably now on the wish and doing, and you know, whatever. Oh, I'm sure. Because like, if you go, if you can go back on a Disney cruise for a second time, you're going to go again. Right. Um, so doing a little tour, let's talk about, uh, I think the next big thing that separates Disney from everybody else, which is rotational dining. Rotational dining. Yeah. I actually, I love it. Yeah. I love rotational dining. Um, so if you've gone on like Royal Caribbean or Celebrity, because they do like one main dining room, um, I'm sure other cruise lines do it too. Um, but you have the same server every night that we did on MSC as well. Yeah. The same mm -hmm. table, same server right. every night for early dining. Um, and it's nice because you do get to, your server kind of gets to know you a little bit, you know, depending on the length of your cruise or whatever. Um, but what's nice about rotational dining, there are three main dining rooms on every Disney ship and you eat at a different one every night. Um, it comes, it, if you've never been on a Disney cruise, you won't know what your rotation is for dining until you get on the ship and look at it on your key to the world card. Um, right. I think it does pop up on your app once you're on the ship Wi-Fi as well um, to tell yeah. you where you eat dinner each night. Um, but not only do you eat in a different restaurant every night, you keep your same server. So they follow you to the different restaurants and they'll tell you at the end of dinner each night, tomorrow night we're eating an animator's palette. Tomorrow night we're eating in worlds of Marvel. Right. Um, they let you know what's happening because they know the rotation because they're going with you. Right. Um, and we got super spoiled with Dan and Amelia on our first cruise. We did. We'll yeah. We'll never forget them. And we saw Amelia. She was on the fantasy in 2022. Yeah. In November, she wasn't yep. like on our dining team or anything, but right. we saw her on the ship and we're like, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people that like come back up to cast members like, oh my gosh, I had right. you like on my last cruise. Like people don't always remember you, but we were excited to see her and we're like, yeah. oh my gosh, Amelia, like you made like our first Disney cruise experience so good. Like right. we keep coming back. We loved you. And it was when you were working with Dan in the main dining room. She's like, oh yeah, Dan from Romania. Like she knew. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was exciting. Um, yeah. But your your dining team can be like extra special, um, right? Well, I've, Josh likes to say that it makes or breaks your cruise. That's, that's literally <laughs> what I was about to say. Was um, it, it it is unfortunate that it is something so it 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 really does uh, make or break your cruise. Who was the second year opinion. was Carlos and Gavin. Yeah, and they and they did they, they were did great. great too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your mom and Richard have a picture with them. Yeah, that wasn't the second year, was it? Yeah, it was when we went with your family. And that was 2015. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because I think the I think the next time that we went back on the Fantasy, the service was not as great. I really don't remember. Um, you don't remember because it wasn't that great. I know. Uh, and, and that's why I say it's kind of like this thing where uh, it can make or break your cruise because uh, cast members, in a way, set future cast members up for failure. Uh, Dan and Amelia... Carlos and Gavin were prime examples of that um, because that's a standard that you expect to have every single time. And when you come back again and you have an assistant server who's maybe not as experienced and, you know, is kind of all over the place. And well, I mean, it's even the same long... thing for the specialty dining because those cast members stay in those specialty sure. dining restaurants. Absolutely. And people will come back on the same ships and be like, can I have this server tonight? Right. In Palo. Absolutely. Or can I have them when I come back for brunch in a couple days? Um, right. Cause I remember when we were on the magic, we had this, the server that we had for dinner the one night who did like an awesome, or for, think for brunch. Um, it was awesome. And yeah. then we came back for dinner and she saw us at the door and she like ran over and was like, I'll take them. I want them. Yeah. And so she was our server again. I don't remember her name, but she was wonderful too. Yeah. And then um, Matt and Remy, yep. I, he was an awesome server from the UK. Yep. Um, it was like, it just, it just makes your overall experience right. so much better. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's just like why we keep going back to Bull and Bear in Orlando. Because Absolutely. we love the team there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I Even when we were on the Fantasy, actually, this last time, uh, and we were doing that wedding, the service was not all that great. 
Um, you know, it would take a long time to get like a refill on a drink or to even get a different drink. Unfortunately, uh, our beverage server was, so sometimes the I, beverage and, servers are newer people. Yeah. And, and I will say like, I know that this probably sounds very trivial. If you're listening to this and you're like, why are you getting so upset about these little things? But let me explain real quick. And the fact that the very first cruise that we went on, Dan Amelia, Carlos and Gavin, the second cruise would have been Carlos and Gavin. They really took the time to get to know who the people were that were sitting at their tables. Mm -hmm. um, so they asked us questions and, you know, more than likely, is it a ploy for you to leave them a little bit extra cash at the end of the cruise? Maybe. Maybe. But I think it's a really nice, um, you know, in the first night, whatever you like, whatever we ordered to drink, uh, Amelia had those already prepped and on the table the next night. And it's not a big deal if you want something else to drink. Yep. She would say, if you want something else to drink, just let me know and I'll bring it for you. No problem whatsoever. Right. So when you came and sat down, you didn't have to wait for a drink. You didn't have to ask for a drink. And like, on our first cruise, there was 13 of us. Right. Yeah. At um, one table. Yes. Uh, and the same thing with uh, Carlos and Gavin on the next cruise when it was just. There was six of us. Six of us. Right. Uh, again, really fantastic. Setting little things like that is what separates the Disney experience from a lot of other experiences. You know, when we did Alaska on, uh, this will forever be a joke about joy. Um, and the fact that she literally told Taylor Stop to saying not, her name. It makes me feel so bad. She literally told Taylor to not order wine. She was nice, but she was so overwhelmed. She was, I, <laughs> and, but, but this just proves my point that, um, Sir, your your dining team does really make or bake your cruise, um, but I do think that Disney overall will always have a far more consistent, positive experience yeah. than you will have on any other cruise line. And here's just like one of the other differences that happened between like the other Disney cruises we did and when we went in November 2022. Um, we, every single day at dinner... Whether we were the first people in the dining room for dinner or the last people in the room for in dining room for dinner, we were the last table to leave dinner every single day of the seven night cruise. And it was really frustrating. Oh, in 2022, in yeah. 2022, in November, yeah. It was really frustrating. Yeah. Because we we're all sitting there waiting and waiting and right. waiting. And then like thing like not necessarily were things getting messed up, but just like it was like long <laughs> waits between right. everything. But the menus are like not huge. Everybody's right. ordering like the same things really. Yeah. And so we're just like, the just food's all being prepped back happening. there. So, uh, so one of us must have said something at some point in time because oh, I remember. Yes. Because the last couple nights they yeah. actually had a different person come over and help yeah. our table. And like the and last assist. two nights we got out super fast right. because that guy was awesome. I actually wrote a review about how awesome he was right. on our questionnaire at the end of the yeah. cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, rotational dining on Disney is a completely different experience than you're going to get anywhere else. Um, I still am a firm believer that it is just like Taylor said, I think one of the best experiences that you can have because you get a different set of scenery each night, even if it's a seven night or longer and you're going to repeat some of those restaurants, they try to do something a little bit different from the first night to the second night. Right. Uh, what is it? The enchanted garden. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think it happens the first night, but maybe the second night that you're in there, you know, the flowers up on the roof, like they open up. Right? I think it was the first night that the flowers bloom and the second night they like brought characters. Though. Yeah. I mean, they, they try to do something different so that you're not just stuck in the same room, you know, uh, in, like not not to say that you know especially the newer ships with like Norwegian right on the Prima we're going to be on the Prima here in July. Um, I can't wait. It's one of my favorite ships. Yeah, oh I mean my the gosh. restaurants. The Norwegian Prima is beautiful. Deck eight is hands down the yes. best deck on that whole ship. You cannot tell me otherwise. The restaurant on there is beautiful um, that you can go in and sit down at. Yeah, but the main again, dining. at the same time. Going into the same restaurant seven nights in a row, unless you're going to go do specialty dining or maybe you go to the buffet, it, it can feel a little bit old after a while. And it is nice to get kind of that change of pace uh, or well, change of scenery. We're actually going to be on the Prima for 10 nights. 
Well, that's what I know, but I'm just saying like. But we have three specialty dinings booked. Right. On a on a general <laughs> kind of like seven night sailing. I think that's, you know, kind of the average that most people take. It would be definitely be the average yeah. seven. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to get that change of scenery. And, and even whenever you do a Disney cruise and you do less than seven nights, nine times out of ten, you're going to wish that you did seven. Almost guaranteed. I'm so glad we did seven for our first one. Yeah. Because then when we went and did five on the Magic, we were like, this is way too short. Yeah. <laughs> so rotational dining is great. The serving team follows you around. Um, and if it does seem like maybe the first two nights are not going very well, the best thing that you could possibly do, and I know that like people feel really, really uncomfortable about this, but um, the very, very best thing that you can do is say something to the head server. So you don't even necessarily need to say something to your main server and the assistant server. You say something to the head server um, who's kind of over that section of the restaurant. Because each, each area, like the, yeah. the restaurant's divided into sections. And so each section has a different head waiter or server, server or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them. Um, and they actually, they come around multiple times throughout mm-hmm. the cruise. You yeah. can always see them in the dining room. Right. They're always trying they're to They're dressed help. differently. Yeah, they're dressed uh, They're dressed a little bit more fancy, if you will. Right. Um, but they will come around and they will tell you, like, you know, is there, or ask you, is there anything that we can do better? Right. Um, is everything going the way you expect? Like, you know, is there anything, yeah. you know, do you need anything else? Right. And we did on, in 2022, in November, we did right. tell him, like, We've done a lot of Disney cruises and this right. is the slowest dining we've ever had. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like the whole entire dining room was having slow. It right. was just us. Yeah. And yeah. so it was a little frustrating. Yeah. It was. <laughs> um, I re- I cannot remember her name, but I remember in January 2022, our server, I don't remember our drinks, like our assistant server, but our main server. Oh yes, I remember. Was from Trinidad and yep. Tobago. Mm-hmm. Tobago. Yep. I remember. Yes, yeah, she was great. Oh my gosh, why can't I remember yeah. her name? Yeah, she was really great. She because made. She brought you a second lobster because she didn't like how she cut the first cut one. The yeah. tail. Yeah. Well, she didn't bring it to me. She brought it to you because I oh, didn't eat the right. lobster. Oh, that's right. You were recording. I was recording. But she didn't like it, yeah. and so she yeah. brought me another one because she yeah. said it didn't look good for the video. Yeah. Woo! Bring your excitement Sorry, down here. Uh, and I'm drinking Red Bull, so that doesn't help. No, either. it doesn't at all. And Josh got me the 12 ouncer instead because of they the didn't eight. have eight ounces at the gas station. Um, yeah, so it, it it actually behooves you to not say something earlier in the cruise if 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 it is going awry or if you feel like it's not maybe as top notch and and if it's your first time, it should really be like. Like Disney is meant to be set apart from everybody else. So, you know, we're going to talk should about dining something. all day if we don't move on. To I know. Else. I know we will. <laughs> um, so let's talk about something else. I think too, when it comes to being bored on a cruise ship, cause that's, you know, we get a lot of people who, when they, when we, when they come to us, whether it's Taylor and myself and they're asking questions about traveling or doing a cruise or even within go, go getaways and they're asking agents and, uh, and, and, you know, occasionally I'll ask the agents, like, what are some commonly asked things that you get? Uh, you know, people say, well, I feel like I might be bored on the ship. So let's talk about that because Disney, we have yet, I think Royal Caribbean does a pretty good job of matching Disney's activity schedules. Royal um, Caribbean has a lot of activities. Yeah, they, they do a really great job. Um, yeah. But on Disney Cruise specifically, there is a lot going on. Um, and I think a lot of stuff that's obviously, again, Completely and totally unique. And why is that? Because Disney has Disney. Um, at the end of the day, Disney sells itself. Mm-hmm. Um, when you go on to a Disney cruise, you're surrounded 100% by Disney. Now, Royal Caribbean, years ago, uh, this would have been before 2020. And I think then, I think it was like 2019, maybe their whatever contract with DreamWorks expired. But Royal Caribbean for a while had DreamWorks characters they on did. their um, on their cruises. So I think it was mostly like um, I'm imagining Madagascar. Madagascar, yeah, I think yeah. it was mostly Madagascar. Somebody who knows in the comments or is listening, whatever, could can correct us, but pretty sure it's Madagascar. Um, Disney sells itself. So activities, right? You can go meet all of the Disney characters. Um, I'm really going to make a point to show this when we're on the ship on the Wish to explain this whole process. Cause I feel like I always explain it, but I never actually get any good video of the whole thing. And that is the fact that like Disney sets up their character meet and greets phenomenally on the uh, ships on oh, the ship. Yeah. 
because it is all a big circuit and it all just goes right in order. So if you go down, you know, they're not meeting all the time throughout the day, but let's multiple say like multiple times though, multiple times, right? Like, let's say they're not meeting in the morning, but they start at 1030. You want to be there at 1030 because at 1045 or maybe probably 1045, probably 1045, the next character comes out, but they don't replace who you're meeting first. They go to another location, usually like on the same deck and close proximity to the atrium. And then usually like another, maybe 15, 10, 15 minutes, minutes later, later, another character comes out. And so what you do is you end up doing this circuit where you literally never wait like more than five minutes mm -hmm. um, in line to meet the character. Uh, and then usually like, let's say if atrium's on deck five or four on deck five, they've got a whole nother set of characters coming out. And so you just, Hit the characters on the bottom, go up the stairs, get in line, and start knocking them out on the top. And by that time, deck four, where you originally started, has new characters. Mm -hmm. It is really, really phenomenal. It's really great. You don't have to wait in the sun outside or... Well, and depending on the day, um, depending on the weather, um, if it's too windy, if it's rainy, that sort right. of thing, if it's nice weather out... On the occasion, you'll see the, I'm looking at you, you'll see the characters roaming out on the decks. Yeah. Um, not just the pool decks. Um, if they are on the pool decks, sometimes they have really cute, like different outfits, outfits yeah. on, like um, like a sunny day or swimsuit type outfit. Um, if it's pirate night, they might be wandering around oh, with yeah. some pirate type outfits on. Um, we've seen like Goofy and Chippendale and Mickey like out in the shuffleboard area, um, out on like the side lower decks. Right. Um, yeah, you just, and sometimes those characters are not listed. You just kind of have to be roaming around. And if you see them, go to them. Um, right. Because they might not be there if you go do something else and then come back. Yeah, it's it's this really kind of convenience that you get. Because if you're in Magic Kingdom and you wanted to meet Mickey Mouse and Minnie and all of them, most of the time Mickey and Minnie are not going to be in the same place. They're going to be in two completely different locations in the, in the park. Uh, if you want to go meet the princesses, you can go into the princess hall and kind of hit a couple of them in turn. But then there's other princesses that you're not going to be able to meet. Like Tiana is going to be now back at the back of the park, right? When they do princess uh, like meet and greets down there. Well, they've changed. You, they've changed it now. Well, you have to book a time for it now. But I think that they still meet freely, though, sometimes. They do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't have to run all over the ship, um, is my point in meeting a lot of the characters. They do meet in other places throughout the ship. Yeah. But when you talk about walking like from the atrium towards like the back of the ship where the theater's at, you're, okay, talking you're, two minutes. you're, you're not walking like a half mile. You're not walking from, from Frontierland to Tomorrowland. To Land. Space Mountain, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, you're walking 100 feet. You're walking from the partner statue to like halfway down Main Street. <laughs> If that maybe the whole way down Main Street if, if we go the length of the ship. Not even that, I don't think. That that's the length of the far. ship, I said. I mean from the front to the back, maybe, yeah. But I mean they're close. All the characters typically meet in like one central right. location. Occasionally they'll meet yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. If you don't like if they're not there, then they're free roaming normally. And you can just kind of grab a photo with them, you know, relatively quickly. They try to not get line swarming because they're free roaming, yeah. right? Um so yeah, I, I think that that's really great. Uh, other activities is, uh, I think one of the primary things it's Disney. Everybody loves Disney trivia, Disney trivia. Taylor's Let terrible. At tell Disney you, trivia. Sometimes it is hard. You got your answers. Oh my God. No. You don't have your previous Disney trivia answers. I have no idea where that would be. Oh my gosh. That's cheating. Cause you're above that. That was not my answer sheet. <laughs> nah. um, what I will say is that it is such a popular activity that you do need to try to arrive early. Yeah. Um, I think for the very first time ever at a, at a trivia, did we go to a trivia and there was only us and one other team? You remember that? That was on the, on the fantasy in November, 2022. Um, it was us and one other family. Uh, and it was about it was Disney, Disney cruise, cruise line, line trivia. Yeah. And we it did really, tough, we did we, pretty well. We did some studying because we yeah. saw it on the thing and we were like, let's like look up some Disney like right. cruise line stuff just to make sure we have like our dates right of like the order of the ships and yeah. what year they came out, whatever. Right. Um, and thank goodness we did because 
Yeah. We ended up getting like almost all of those answers right. Yeah. Just verifying our information. And we yeah. did not do this during trivia. We right. did this well before when we saw it was announced on the thing. Right. They didn't say you couldn't study for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, so that was fun. We got like a backpack and some other like little goodies in there. Yeah. yeah. We it was, got like it was a bunch cool. of stuff yeah. in there. Oh, yeah. they got the real cool like uh, medallions now. They're not Mickey medallions. Right. They're all the character the different, different medallions. Characters, yeah. I think I have almost all of them. Yeah. Um, okay, so trivia, I think, is a big one. Um, if you're looking for, like, adult-only activities, they have mixology, mixology classes, whiskey, whiskey tasting, wine, wine tasting, uh, champagne tasting. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably have a rum. Rum tasting. Gin. I'm pretty sure gin there's a gin tasting, one. Yeah. I don't know if they do vodka. But, uh, but, but there's adult activities like that for you. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely adult entertainment. They do have their, like, uh, burlesque kind of like style show it is still very very conservative for being oh, yeah. an adult only activity <laughs> we're, we're disney here okay? right um but then i think the other thing too which is really great is you get to see some of these broadway style shows oh yeah the broadway style disney shows are really good so we're going on the wish so we're gonna have frozen again frozen and is it aladdin is it the new aladdin one i think i think yeah uh, and, and those are really great. I, you know, I think there's a show every night in the theater. Yeah. Um, a Broadway style show, whether it's, a um, you know, a reenactment of a movie in Broadway style, or if it's like a show that they have created for the ship. Yeah. Um, cause they do have that as well. Um, they're all really good. There's two showings every night. Um, there's a early showing for the people that have late dinner. And then there's a late showing for, for the people, people that have early, early dinner. Yeah. Uh, there's movie theaters. There's well, two. hold on. Yeah, well, I just want to, I know. I, but what I want to talk about, though, with, with the shows, and this, again, what separates Disney from everybody else, because Disney is Disney. When you get on Royal Caribbean or you get on Norwegian, they have to have something to try and entertain so many different people with so many different uh, backgrounds of interest, right? Everybody on a Disney ship, for the most part, is interested in Disney. So they have no pro They know we can make something Disney and people are going to love it and enjoy it. And they're going to come back and watch it time and time again. And this has never been more true than when we watch stuff on Royal Caribbean or on Norwegian. And we watch some of these things and we're like, what in the world are we watching right now? Uh, this makes no sense. Uh, it's just nonsense. It's not a Disney storyline. You know, that's for sure. And that's the other thing too. I think a lot of the other shows don't have a good storyline either. Yeah. You know, um, the water show, the aqua theater show on Royal Caribbean certainly is entertaining to some extent, but oh, yeah. doesn't really have any type of story base. It's just people jumping from heights yeah. and doing flips and dancing and water, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think that that's a really great thing. Uh, that Disney has that again keeps us coming back. And when we were on our first cruise, what I thought was really great was not necessarily the theaters, but like you just mentioned, were the movie theaters mm -hmm. where you could watch first run movies. But Taylor never wants to go in there and watch anything. Taylor never wants to go in and watch a movie. I remember we did watch Frozen on one of the cruises uh, and we watched Saving Mr. Banks. Um, because Saving Mr. Banks was, I think it had either. It's the first run. They, they do first runs. It had there. either just come out in theaters or was just about to come out in theaters. Right. So we watched Saving Mr. Banks and then we, Frozen was already out in theaters, but we really liked it. So we did go watch that. Yeah. Um, we ate ate our food in the theater and yeah. watched the movie. Yeah. Um, Probably one of the craziest things though, that I will knock Disney for is the fact that they charge you for popcorn to eat inside of that theater. It should just be included. It's so cheap. Popcorn is extra. So cheap. Yeah. As Bryson would say, popcorn sales pay for the fireworks. So. <laughs> fireworks at sea. Yeah. On pirate night only. Um, but I think right there is a good, another thing that is really cool about Disney. Um, and I think what, I know I wouldn't necessarily, that this continues to bring us back, but it's certainly something special is oh, the yeah. fact that they do fireworks at sea. Um, it is actually really funny. If you go back to your room uh, that night after the fireworks are done and take a look at the map, because if there's inclement weather in the surrounding area, 
the ship will constantly be spinning and turning to try and avoid those things so that they can do the fireworks. Yep. Um, and even I think to some extent they try to avoid putting the fireworks in the smoke. So they're turning the ship and trying to keep the wind pushing the smoke away yeah. from the fireworks so that it's not um, disrupting anybody's view of, mm-hmm. of, of said fireworks, which is really cool. So. I was trying to think of other activities on board. They've got the mini golf. They've got ping pong. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a lot of things. Chip it golf. You got the chip it golf champion in 2014. A, I am a chip it golf champion. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, it's just, it's really great. Um, Disney, I could certainly try to sell you on going on a Disney cruise all day long uh, of why it's oh like so gosh, fantastic and so great. But really you have to experience it for yourself. Um, and Ooh, also, okay. So we talked a little bit about the buffet. There's also like quick service restaurants too, which oh, right. we like to visit in like the evening, um, or even like in the afternoon, they have pizza, burgers, right. chicken tenders. They've got like some wraps, fries. Well, the fries are good. Yeah. They got the salad bar, right? Josh's brother, Ethan loved the salad bar. Yeah. Um, I remember on our first cruise, we got like a bowl of the dill pickle chips, and had them sitting on a table. I don't remember that. And we were like all sitting in a circle up. Um, like we were like looking down at the cove pool. And we were just eating pickles out of this bowl as we chatted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember that. I but do. Yeah, I mean, well, talking about food too. Uh, you have um, complimentary uh, room service. Another really big thing that like a lot of people... You know, a lot of other cruises are going to charge you extra for that, but... Um, I saw it in our Disney Wish Facebook group for our upcoming uh, cruise. Where were we at? <laughs> Special shout out to me, Mom. <laughs> uh, let's... Oh, speaking of me, Mom. Um, oh. So the have very first ever, time... Have we ever talked about this? I, we have certainly talked about this with friends, um, especially from our from our group cruise, our group cruise friends. But um, me, Mom... Uh, have you seen me mom in any videos? Uh, Probably, maybe not. Uh, you certainly, if if you go back and like maybe maybe we'll share some if, like old photos of all. If of us you together. go back to the, if you go to our YouTube channel and go to our videos and click to search by oldest and click on the 2014 um, Disney Cruise Fantasy video. Um, she's definitely in a couple of clips of that. It's like a six minute long yeah. montage. They're pretty quick, but, um, yeah. anyways, I'm sure she's in something else so, at some point. In time. Yeah. So me mom. All right. Let's, let's just, cause just cause she called me about her TV. Um, me mom, the very first time that I ever went on a cruise with Taylor's family. This was a cruise okay. that we went on together. This is my first cruise. Oh yeah. You're right. My parents' um, first cruise. Yeah. You're right. Uh, we are staying in Port Canaveral the night before um, because it just made sense. You know, you get there the night before. I encourage everybody, you should always arrive to your cruise a day early. You never know what could happen. Um, but we're sitting at like, I think it was like Best Western or something like that is where we stayed. Yeah, that's where we stayed. And we're like talking about things. Maybe me mom is packing some things up. She went to the store. God knows for what reason. Until... Tina sees that she has bought a dog leash. It's like one of those wire outdoor dog red. leashes. It's red wired dog leash, right? And it's like, I don't know how many feet, but it's a freaking roll, right? I mean, it's huge. And so she's packing this in her suitcase and Tina's like, why on earth? Like, what, what did you get a dog leash for? And I kid you not. Me mom's response was no, no, no. She was she's like, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. She didn't tell us until after the cruise. You're right. What you're it right. was for. Then right. she finally admitted what it was. After the cruise, she finally tells us what it was for, and she says, her words. She wasn't kidding. She's being 100 percent serious. I bought this leash so that if the ship goes down, I can tie us all together. And my first thought was, ain't no way you're tying me to you. Like, not gonna happen. <laughs> Right. Uh, absolutely hilarious. So funny. Um, this is also the same person who you have to go through a metal detector to get on the ship. (laughs) Empty your pockets. They tell you how many times empty your pockets. Me mom walks through, doesn't empty your pockets, has to go back through. Do you have stuff in your pockets? Oh yeah. I have stuff in my pockets. 
empties one pocket. It's, it's like, like a handful, handful of handful change. of change. I don't know what you need a lot of change for. It's 2014, she so who knows? She likes to have change in her pocket. Goes back through, goes off again. Oh, didn't empty the other pocket. Full change, car keys, everything. Anyways, you know, me, mom, grandma, you know, they're always the the funny sort. Uh, uh-huh. you know. Between her and Uncle Jim, they give us some good laughs oh, no on doubt. our trips. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we talked about activities. Obviously, Castaway Key. I will say this. I have no shame in saying this about Castaway Key. I already know what you're going to say. It is the saddest looking island as you approach it. Uh, when you, especially when you compare it to Coco Cay, uh, even with Norwegian's private island that they can never get to because they don't have a pier, they just announced they're, they're going to build building one. one. But um, even with with the with them, at least they have something that looks half decent. Perfect day, perfect day, perfect day at Coco Cay. Yeah, uh, Castaway Key looks so sad. It's totally flat. There's nothing kind of like eye catching as you approach it. It's not very colorful, but it is a really nice destination once you get there and you step mm-hmm. foot onto the island. Um, you know, you can meet all of your favorite characters, the Fab Five. Jack's out walking about every so they often. They got new outfits. They got new outfits. We will be stopping to um, meet them. I don't care if you want to sprint for a hammock. We're stopping to meet that's them. That's fine. Uh, they've got a, a, a enclosed lagoon, so it is fenced off. Uh, they do have warnings up that like, you know, you could still see some barracudas or sharks, but it's really like a lawyer saying, uh, you know, they've got a cool, like little water slide jungle gym esque kind of play area for Pelican plunge. Pelican plunge. Yeah. It's both for kids and adults. Oh yeah. Um, and then they've got the private Island or the, um, private the Island. It is a private the adult island. only beach. The, the adult only beach. Right. Uh, which is complimentary. Don't have to pay mm-hmm. extra for it. They have great stakes over there. Included, you don't have to pay for, right? I say that as a jab because I, I, I compare I compare Royal Caribbean and Disney. Royal Caribbean looks really, really great as you approach it. I mean, it is picturesque. Like, that's where you want to go. But to get to the adult-only beach now, you have to pay for it. To get a steak, you got to pay for it. Um, so it is nice. Disney has this island that is, for the most part, totally included. Kinda, here's the difference, if you will. While Disney does not have a alcohol package, um, what you end up paying on a Royal Caribbean cruise after you add some sort of beverage package, specialty dining, um, if you want to do something extra when you get to Coco Cay, whether it's the hideaway beach, it's the adult only area, or you want to go to South Beach um, and pay for the private access to that. um, Once you add all that in together, you are probably looking at the price of what you would pay to go on a Disney cruise that has a lot of that stuff already. Included. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. So you just, you just kind of the, <clears throat> the price that you see up front is like this much per state room on Disney and this much per state room on Royal Royal is definitely, or whatever, whatever other cruise line is going to look better. But once you add all that extra stuff in, it's going to yeah, be closer in price. It comes a little bit closer. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and Castaway Key is lovely. I mean, I always really enjoy going to Castaway Key. Coco Cay is still my favorite private island to go to. It's really good. Uh, it we'll just be back there in June. I know. Oh, you just wait. We're I gonna, know. We're gonna yeah. have a good time. Oh yeah, we are. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, thanks to Carrie, who, if you want to book a book a oh. cruise with Carrie, you can message Carrie or send her an email. Carrie at coolgogetaways.com. <laughs> Um, that's Taylor's mom, if you didn't know. So, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Castaway Key is lovely. I love snorkeling in the lagoon. Taylor mm-hmm. gets really upset every time we go to Castaway Key. I did do it one time, though. Because I spend way too much time in the lagoon. I said this literally like the last episode, that we don't yeah, make a, a good video, Castaway Key video on Castaway yeah. Key because Josh is out snorkeling. I'm out looking for the darn turtle, man. I haven't seen him that in years. That was 2015. I know. I haven't seen him in years. So, yeah, but uh, Castaway Key's great. Um, still a lot of other activities you can do. You can go snorkeling off the island. You can go... Uh, There's excursions at Castaway Key that you can book, too. What are those things called? There's Snickerdoodles? Uh, a not... trike? A water trike? No. If you want to get a divorce on a cruise... <laughs> if you want to test a marriage, right. rent a water trike with your spouse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right there. Uh, I was fine on the trike. You weren't hot. Yeah, you were, right? Because you weren't pedaling. I couldn't reach 
change the pedals. For crying out loud. <laughs> they should have a, a a low height restriction for the trikes because I literally. They should just not. have a sign right there when you're coming off the trike that says, do you need a divorce lawyer? We've got you set up. Right. <laughs> oh, um, stop. It was a beautiful view, though, once we maybe out there. Okay, maybe divorce lawyers too far. Maybe would they, do you need marriage counseling? Yeah. Here you go. Um, but they've got, yeah, they've got all kinds of things you can get uh, while you're there. So it, it is really great. Some of the most expensive Disney cruises um, are ones where they do double hits. They, they stop at the island twice. Yeah. Um, some of them don't even go anywhere else. They just go out to sea, do Castaway Key. Uh, and stay there overnight. I've seen them before. I don't think they've done that in a long time, but no. I think it's usually like maybe Nassau, Castaway Key, or Castaway Key, Nassau, Castaway Key, something like that. Sea Day, whatever. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, Disney's great. Um, and uh, I just want, like, a few things that have changed over the years, because I know this episode's running really long um, compared to our normal ones. Taylor's getting tired. I can see that. You're yawning over there. Uh, I think one of the biggest changes that they have made in order to make more money Way back when we first went on the cruise, the first two times we went on the cruise, 2014, 2015, you used to be able to bring on your own liquor, your own because spirits. Because they don't have a beverage package. Because they didn't have a beverage package, yeah. Um, and I think we've talked about this too, where uh, Taylor's mom got in the elevator with some other, like some other guy gets on and they both just have refillable cups because Disney allows you to bring They're on your like, own cups. But they were like kind of clear. You could see yeah. through them a little bit. And they just had a little bit of something at the bottom. And they both looked at each other like going up to get Coke or something like that. You know, they're like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, because they had like Captain in the bottom. So they're going to go add some Coke to it. So, um, yeah, I think the first, you know, I'll rat Matthew out here too. Throw him under the bus. Um, the second cruise that we went on, which was with my family, I brought on a bottle of Absolute Citrone, mm -hmm. uh, which was really great to mix with like lemonade or, um, you know, whatever else is. What was I don't remember what I mixed it with. Uh, we were like halfway through the cruise, not even halfway through the cruise. And we're all having a great time down in the, um, where were we at? In the tube, the in the tube. tube. Yeah. Matthew disappears, comes back with a drink. I was like, oh, you know, Matthew probably got a little bit of, of my Citrone cause we were sharing a room. Nope. Whole bottle was like completely, he I mean, not that he drank the whole bottle. No, but, but he finished what was left. But, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, like, that was kind of a nice time because you didn't have to spend the extra that money on it. That was the night he fell running down the hallway. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> um, what else has changed? There's something else that I was thinking of that has changed since then. Internet's changed um, as well. I know it's kind of trivial, but, um, gosh, there was something else that I was thinking of, and now I can't forget. You can't forget. I can't forget. I forget. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. This is great though. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to be back on it. Um, and I thought today would just be a great way for us just to talk a little bit more about it. Um, I think I we, could go on and on about sure. Not just any kind of travel because I literally have to stop myself like in conversations with people. Cause I could just go on and on. Right. Um, but like, I could go on and on about Disney Cruise yeah. Line because we've just enjoyed it so much. Don't get me wrong. We do enjoy the other cruise lines. It's just, there's just, something about it there's nostalgia and i think there's a comfort level we talked about yeah, this a little bit last definitely. week um not that i'm trying to extend this episode out any longer but we talked about this last week a little bit Gotta and go help me mom. i know and in <laughs> doing some other things um there's a bubble that you feel really comfortable and safe in when you go to walt disney world right people know the disney bubble and you and you don't have that you know let's say when you do a cruise in the mediterranean and you go to rome and all these other places like you're in a place that you've never been to before where they speak a foreign language. Um, even though a lot of people still speak English, uh, it, it, it can be very overwhelming. So totally understand having that bubble and wanting to not wanting to leave. But that also happens with Disney Cruise Line. I mean, it is something that you know uh, what to expect. and You know it's going to be quality uh, over the drive of quantity and getting people on a ship and trying to sell them something. So. Um, yeah, if you've made it this long, I appreciate you. Um, thanks for listening. Let us know if, have you done a Disney cruise? What's been your favorite Disney cruise? Have you done a unique itinerary with Disney, right? Mm -hmm. They're going yes. to Australia now. They've done um, Northern Europe. They're soon going to be hitting out of Singapore here in the next few Ooh, years. On the new, the new ship they've acquired. Yeah. The Disney the adventure. adventure. 
Um, I want to do that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would just be interested to know. Usually I like to try to start. Actually, I say I usually I did it only last week, but um, try to start these episodes off with asking a question um, before we get started into the topic. I think that's what I should do. But, you know, let us know. Um, and if you thought maybe you couldn't afford doing a Disney Cruise Line, like, like I said, reach out to one of the agents over Go Go Getaways and yeah. just let them know. Sit down, have a conversation with them. You know, maybe you can't go next year. Maybe it's something you budget for the next two years mm -hmm. um, and get to go with you and your family or you and your spouse or you and, you know, whoever. I mean, when we were younger, that's what we did. Right. Um, you know, we went in 2014 and 2015, but then realized, like, we stayed in an inside state room in 2015, though. Right. To save money to be able to go again. And we didn't go again until 2017. Yeah. We had to save a little bit to be right. able to go again. Right. So. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that's about it, everybody. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, you'll hear us in the next one. you hear us in the next one. Hear us in the next one. Bye.